welcome dear students uh, welcome to nuclear physics lectures uh, in this lectures uh, we will talk about the classifications of particles i'm dr pravez ahmed so let's start about the uh, classification of the particles uh, so uh, first of all let's have a look at the particle overview so just like you can see it here in this particular uh, sketch in this particular diagram you can see that all the particles uh, they are being classified in three major categories uh, you know that the, the first category on the left hand side uh, is called uh, leptons uh, the leptons uh, it's being labeled in the a blue color ball in the middle you see green balls uh, uh, these are the group of the particles they are called uh, these are called the bosons uh, and uh, the right hand side so there are particles they are called uh, uh, hadrons so the leptons are uh, bosons and hadrons they are further divided in different groups of the particles so let's start from the leptons uh, leptons uh, is a group of the particles uh, which includes uh, electrons uh, positrons uh, muons and ne uh, neutrinos uh, bosons uh, on the other hand uh, it's a, a group of particles uh, that contains uh, photons uh, neutral bosons, uh, charge bosons, and Higgs bosons. Hadrons uh, on the right hand side, uh, these are the group of the particles which consist, uh, which is further divided in two main groups. Uh, the first group is called the baryon. Uh, baryons are basically uh, uh, the particles uh, which are being made from the combinations of three quarks. And uh, mesons. Uh, are basically the, the group of particles uh, that is being formed from the combinations of the quarks and anti quarks. So, baryons uh, they are further divided into two groups. Uh, our baryons uh, it consists of the two particles, uh, the, the well known particles uh, one is called protons and the other called uh, neutrons. So, protons and neutrons they, they are the type of the baryons which are being made from different combinations of quarks uh, while mesons uh, they are being further divided into two types uh, one is called pi mesons and the others uh, they are called uh, k mesons so this is an overview of the of the particles uh, classifications so let's first talk about the uh, hadrons and the lepton the, the which are the two main uh, categories of the uh, of the particles so what are hadrons? Uh, hadrons are particles uh, that interact through a strong uh, nuclear force uh, which interact through a strong interactions. The example, uh, example of the hadrons are protons, uh, neutrons, uh, pions, and pions. I mean, these are the particles uh, which we say that they are interacting through a strong nuclear force or by the exchange of the gluon. Uh, leptons, on the other hand, uh, they are the particles or a group of the particles that interact to uh, the weak interactions. And these particles, these are believed uh, to be immune to the strong nuclear uh, force. The example of the leptons are uh, electrons, uh, positrons, muons, uh, and uh, neutrinos. All the charged particles uh, interact through electromagnetic uh, interactions. Uh, let's talk about uh, in more details about uh, the hadrons. So, as we already told, uh, as we already discussed, that uh, hadrons is further divided into two main categories uh, that is, uh, baryons and uh, mesons. So, uh, what are baryons? Uh, baryons are, are the hadrons that are uh, protons uh, are particles that eventually decays into uh, protons let me repeat it again uh, baryons they are basically the particles or uh, they are the basically the hadrons uh, which are uh, protons are particles that eventually decays into uh, protons i mean the basic building block here in this particular category uh, consist of the protons. I mean, it can get some other particles, but those particles eventually decays into uh, protons. 
so bare yarns uh, uh, bare yarns are massive particles uh, which are made up by any three combinations of core i mean it's uh, a uh, bare yarns, uh, when we are saying that it's a massive particle, it means that from the particle from which they are being made, uh, they have mass, they carry, uh, they carry mass. And they are being made from uh, three combinations of cores. So, uh, in this category, uh, the proton uh, is the only stable uh, baryon. Uh, neutrons are also baryons and they decay into protons with a half life of 12 minutes i mean uh, we have uh, uh, two the two main particles uh, and baryons we have the protons and the neutrons but uh, here we are saying that the proton uh, is the only stable particles here in this particular category uh, neutrons here uh, uh, neutrons are the baryons uh, but they decay into protons uh, with a half life of uh, 12 minutes and uh, be remembers that uh, baryons are also uh, called uh, permions. Now, what what are mesons? So uh, mesons, on the other hand, they are the hadrons uh, that do not include protons and their decay product. What it means mean that uh, they are the hadrons that do not include uh, protons and in their uh, decay product. I mean, so whenever they decay. Uh, and it doesn't matter to what extent their decay uh, uh, goes to, but uh, the decay product uh, does not uh, contain uh, the proton and their final product. So uh, mesons, uh, they are basically the intermediate mass particles uh, which are made up of a cores and anti cores pair. I mean, uh, meson is basically the group of the particles. Uh, which are being made from the combination of a cork and anti cork. I mean, whenever uh, we have a combination of cork and anti cork, so such a combination makes uh, the type of particles uh, which we call uh, mesons. So, this is the special characteristic of the uh, mesons. Uh, what it means, it means that uh, the special combination means that these are particles, are a group of particles which are uh, being made from a pair of cores and anti cores. So, uh, what it means, uh, just like if you remember, we discussed about uh, uh, about the particle and antiparticles in previous lectures. So we discussed that whenever the particle and antiparticles uh, they combine, so they annihilate with the emissions of the energy. So what it means, it's mean that whenever we have mesons, so those those mesons they exist for a very short duration of time. Or in other words, uh, they are very much unstable. So uh, what it means, it means that all the mesons are highly unstable. Uh, examples of the mesons uh, include uh, phaeons, uh, which include uh, phi mesons, and kion, that is uh, k mesons. And also we remember that uh, mesons, uh, all the mesons, they are uh, the bosons, that is uh, they carry the integral spans. Uh, leptons. So leptons are believed to be the fundamental particles. Uh, what it means? Uh, what it means when we say uh, that these are the fundamental particles? It means that uh, they do not decay into any other particles uh, except leptons. So that's why we are saying that these are the fundamental particles. So let me repeat it again. Uh, leptons are believed to be uh, the fundamental particles. Why? Uh, because uh, they do not decay into any other uh, particles except leptons. I mean, uh, first of all, they do not decay, even if they decay, so they decay and only into their own uh, type, that is, uh, leptons. So there are three families of the leptons and anti leptons uh, and other up increases, uh, increasing rest mass. Uh, number first, the first category of the leptons uh, is uh, uh, in the first category of the leptons we have uh, electrons and uh, their neutrinos. The second category is uh, we have muons and their neutrinos. And third category is uh, we have uh, thawans and uh, their uh, neutrinos. So these are basically the three categories of the 
uh, three well-known uh, families of the uh, leptons and their uh, anti-leptons. So only electrons and their neutrinos are stable. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is the well-known fact in the leptons, uh, that is uh, electrons uh, and the leptons, they are the only stable particle. Uh, only electron and their neutrinos or stable particles and uh, these categories. Uh, generations of cores and the uh, leptons. Note that both uh, cores and leptons exist in three distinct sets, just like uh, you can see it here. Uh, that is, we have three distinct sets of uh, cores and uh, uh, leptons. So um, we remember that each set of the cores and the leptons uh, charge type is called a generation of matter. So just like you can see it here, uh, we have uh, first generations, uh, we have second generations, and we have a uh, three generation. That's why we are saying that each set of cores and lepton charge types uh, is called a generation of matter. So uh, we have charges, uh, and the charges they are being classified as uh, plus two by three, uh, minus one by three, uh, zero, and minus one uh, as you go down each uh, generation. So, so here you can see that these are different generations of the cores, and each set of the cores and lepton uh, charge types uh, is called a generations of the matters. Uh, and here we say that charges uh, uh, which they carry uh, that is uh, we start from the up course and then we go uh, from the left to uh, to left to right so the charges is 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3 0 and minus 1 as you go down each generation so, I mean as we start from here from the top that is up course down course and then uh, electron neutrino and electron so here the charge uh, varies the charge varies from 2 by 3 of uh, minus 1 by 3 0 and minus 1 so uh, the generations are organized by increasing mass number I mean here we have these generations uh, first second third uh, generations and uh, we remember that, that uh, these generations are organized uh, by increasing mass so uh, what about the visible universe uh, when we are talking about the generations of the car so what we have, uh, um, I mean, uh, what's the information we have for the visible universe? So all the visible uh, matter and the universe is made from first generations of matter particles. I mean, you know, this is the first generations of the matter particles, uh, which includes cars and the lepton. So the cars and the leptons and first generations uh, of particle. Uh, are uh, up cars, down cars, electron, neutrinos, and electrons. So here we are saying that all the visible matters, I mean, whatever the matters uh, we see in the universe, they are being made from first generations of the matter particle. So uh, up, down cars, uh, electron, neutrinos, and electrons, they are the first generations of matter particles. So up cars, down cars, and electrons they are what they are called uh, the first generations of the particle and uh, all the visible matter and the universe is made from the, uh, this first generation of the particle so what is the reasons or why it is like this so it's because that uh, all the second and third generation of particles are unstable and quickly decays and to stable uh, first generation particle. I mean, here you can see uh, we have uh, the second generation and third generation of the particles, but these, uh, uh, but particles in these generations, uh, they are highly unstable. And after some time, they decays and to uh, first generations of the particle. So that's why we're saying that all the visible matters and the universe is made from the first generations of a matter particle because uh, these particles uh, they are being stable uh, in all the generations and all the matter in the universe uh, are being made from this generation of the particle. Uh, spin is basically uh, a property of the particle. Uh, so what is the spin? 
uh, span is a value of the angular momentum assigned to all the particles. I mean, we have particles and their antiparticles. Uh, so uh, all these particles they have some uh, very basic properties uh, which include a span uh, so what is a span uh, span uh, is basically a value of the angular momentum assigned to all particles so uh, when a top span uh, when a top span it has a certain amount of the angular momentum uh, the faster it spans the greater the angular momentum this idea of angular momentum is also applied uh, to the particles, but it appears to be an intrinsic, uh, unchangeable property. For example, an electron uh, has and will always have a 1 by 2 of span. I mean, uh, that's why we are saying that spin is an intrinsic property that is an unchangeable properties of the uh, particle. So, we are taking the example of the electron that is, it has. And it will have uh, the span uh, that uh, should be equal to uh, 1 by 2. So, in quantum theories, uh, angular momentum is measured uh, in units of h that we call the Planck constant, and h is equal to uh, h divided by uh, 2 phi, here 2 phi means uh, 2 pi. Uh, that is h cut, uh, h cut, uh, this is not basically h, this is h cut, which is equal to Planck constant divided by. Uh, 2 pi can be our written phi uh, just by I mean some written mistake it's not 2 phi is basically 2 pi uh, which has the values uh, numerical values uh, is equal to 1.05 and to 10 raised to power minus 34 uh, joule second and we call that as a Planck uh, constant uh, jazz is joule second uh, and is pronounced as uh, h bar I mean this is uh, pronounced as uh, h bar or uh, h curve and it's the value this particular value and the unit is uh, joule second so classifications of particles according to spans so according to spans uh, we have fermions means the type of particle uh, which has uh, half integral spans uh, we have bosons as a type of particles uh, which have uh, integral span and we have scalar particles uh, which have a uh, span equal to zero so that's all uh, we have for this particular lectures uh, see you in next lectures uh, till then bye bye